Hi, it's Lee and welcome to the Tesla Economist. Another crazy stock run from Tesla today. At the time of this video, up over 5%, well above $270. One step closer to $300. Just need about two or three more green days like that and we are there. I was even saying back when the stock was around $160 that I think there was a 25% chance Tesla could hit $300 this year. I even bought options to back it up, which admittedly I sold far too early. Obviously, there is now a much higher chance than 25% that Tesla can reach $300 this year, and it looks set to happen, as long as we don't face any scary macro issue in the market. In fact, many investors are thinking it may actually be the opposite, and we get a bull run for the rest of the year. Of course, plenty of other credible investors also still think a market crash is on the way. As a result, there is still a lot of cash out of the markets, and for good reason. It's tempting to receive 5-7% to interest or so on bonds right now, especially if you expected the market to dip again. Except it didn't dip. Recovered, and many stocks are at 52-week highs. Who could have predicted that? Not only that, some of these investors who are waiting for the dip are getting FOMO and worried about missing this bull run and starting to get back in. It's a strange time in the world. We have demographics in play too. Baby boomers have a substantial amount of wealth. They are retiring and spending this money. Anyway, very hard to predict right now, and Tesla stock has been running an insane amount all year, almost up three times from its low. And there's plenty of investors out there trying to explain why this is the case. And it was partly the economy. At the end of last year, we did see a quick market crash. Not just Tesla, but the majors too. Google, Apple, Microsoft, Meta, Nvidia, of which have all recovered exceedingly well. In fact, Tesla has recovered the least well out of them all, implying there is still more potential there as investors get their heads around it better. These stocks are also benefiting from the potential of AI, of which Tesla should also, as according to Elon, no one else is further ahead when it comes to AI. Of course, Tesla was also under pressure from Twitter, which other stocks weren't feeling. There was the demand drop as well, due to higher rates and the economy. And before you interject and say, actually, the demand didn't drop, it was the supply that increased, and Tesla had to lower prices as there was so much supply, these are Elon's words, explaining how cars just become more expensive when interest rates are higher. Tesla definitely felt a drop in demand. It just also happened that Tesla was also ramping up supply at the same time, which made it even worse. And we eventually saw the inevitable price drops. We think Twitter is past us now, and the prices are holding. Investors are feeling more and more comfortable with Tesla at these stock prices. And why not? The stock was above 400 in the past, and Tesla has achieved so much more since. Sure, we're still waiting for some areas of the business to get sorted, like FSD, but it is improving. And Tesla appear to have not given up on the 4680 sales yet, implying they think they can also be solved. And right now, in this market, it wouldn't even surprise me if Tesla hit all-time highs this year, especially when we see the Cybertruck delivery event and see those trucks come off the production line. Finally, we get told the specifications of this machine. What will be the range and drivetrain for the first version? Will Tesla start at the top of the market with a quad or tri-motor of over 400 miles? Or will they have to rely on the current energy density of the 4680 cells and only offer a dual motor with 250 to 300 miles of range? I've said that I think it might end up being likely Tesla run with 2170 cells at first. And if you didn't know, the energy density is much higher than the current 4680 cells. The technical analysts were saying if it breaks 270, then we should see 300. And yes, I'm aware that such analysis is as reliable as reading tea leaves, but often they are right when they say if it hits a certain level, then it could go to another. The issue with them is the first if, but we just hit that. There doesn't appear to be much resistance to 300 now, and then we could get all sorts of FOMO buying into the stock. The smart money waited on the sidelines for the potential crash and didn't anticipate this run. It won't want to miss out too much. The institutions may very well start buying in again, also, Rivian is the latest to join GM and Ford in using Tesla's charging network. I mean, it's a serious disadvantage of any EV OEM to not have ubiquitous charging. As we always say, one of Tesla's competitive advantages is the charging network. And it is, of course, still growing faster than any other. And yes, it is a nice little business model for Tesla too. But when you compare the numbers against the rest of the company, it's hardly the make or break of the company. It's more about other companies starting to admit how much further Tesla is ahead and realizing if they want a chance with EVs, then they need to team up with Tesla and admit defeat. The same will happen for Tesla's FSD. 
When we hear Ford say that they're going to license Tesla's FSD, it will have the same effect for Tesla stock. Credible legacy companies acknowledging that Tesla is that much further ahead when it comes to self-driving. It would also help Ford stock, as investors realize Ford isn't going to miss out on the future technology either. The world realizes Tesla is the future. Legacy autos look like dinosaurs unless they can partner with Tesla. Of course, they do have the slight issue of their EVs costing about twice as much to make an EV as they actually sell for. Not the best business model. And they're working hard to try and to sort that out and investing tens of billions of dollars into their own cell and battery factories. But they have a long way to go still. And that is another part of why Tesla's stock is doing so well. Sure, Tesla's prices and margins are lower than they used to be, but the market has somewhat forgiven that now we compare how much Ford are struggling with costs of EVs. And we can only begin to imagine how much GM must be struggling. I wonder what the cost of goods sold is for the Hummer alone. Making EVs is a tough game. And the number of times we have heard Elon saying making them at volume production is really hard and at a profit too is near impossible. The US government is even helping out about $10,000 per EV, including subsidies and tax credits, but it's still not enough for legacy. We're hearing more about Elon looking at manufacturing in India. A lot of mixed views from investors on this one. Also, we aren't sure what kind of manufacturing, where it's gonna be mega packs or something of a similar size to what Mexico will be for vehicles. How big is the market in India though for EVs? Also, think of the lack of charging infrastructure there and also how much harder FSD is going to be there than almost any other nation in the world. I would imagine if Tesla did build a factory for cars there, then obviously Gen 3, but it would be possibly serve as an export hub for the Gen 3 vehicles, similar to how Shanghai is the export hub for Model Y and Model 3 rear-wheel drive. And perhaps it won't serve the domestic market quite so well. But Tesla want to hedge their export facilities rather than focusing it all from China. India has low-cost labor and a local auto manufacturing industry, plenty of skilled labor to choose from, and with Elon saying the cost of Gen 3 is half of Model 3, I think part of that equation may include the lower cost labor get Tesla get in Mexico when compared to Texas or California. Seeing a second factory get announced this year, which is what Elon said, would give a lot of confidence in growth. Although I would like to also hear the accompanying cell and battery factories to support these factories, as cells are still a fundamental element to EV manufacturing. Anyway, $300 certainly appears on the horizon and with delivery numbers coming up in under two weeks now, and people speculating it might be around 450,000, it could be enough to tilt it in that direction. Hi there. I'm using Verbalate AI video translation and lip sync software. It's pretty amazing. Watch this. I can translate my videos into other languages. For example, I am now speaking Hindi. Namaste. I'm talking about Hindi the first time, but Verbalate is so easy to Or how about Spanish? Hola, vaya, increíble. También puedo hablar español. Sign up at verbalate.ai today to gain early access to trial the product for creators and strategic partners and gain the ability to translate and lip sync videos in all major languages. You can view the info in the description below.